Driving with John is coming through! Hey, welcome to Driving with John. So, as most of you know, because you've been watching my channel for a while, some of you, some of you are brand new, and if you are, make sure you go down and subscribe and ring the bell so that you get all my videos. And make sure you hit that thumbs up, everybody. All right, so, now I've got all that nonsense out of the way, um, I want to talk about the worst six months of my professional and personal life. And that's been the last six months since, uh, has it been six months? Let me see, November, December, January, February, March, April, yeah, six months. So the last six months, and it's going on seven. So oh, it's been crazy. For all of you that have been following along, some of this is gonna be repeat, some of it will be new, but I'm gonna go over all of it really quick because um, it's been a crazy ride and I just wanna document it just so I can remember when things get good, what it's like when it's not so good. So um, started in November, um, towards the end of November, I was uh, coming home actually, and uh, oh no, actually, I'm sorry, I wasn't coming home. I was coming down to pick up a load in South Carolina. I had just delivered in North Carolina, and it was only like I don't know, 60 miles or whatever. And so I stayed overnight at a rest area, left the next morning to go pick up the load. And as I, um, I got on 95 South, my truck started kicking and bucking and just running really bad. So I pulled over and I let it I let it kind of uh, equalize out a little bit. It seemed like it was running a little bit better, but still not great. And I saw there was a Loves coming up, so I went ahead and you know jumped back up on 95 and made the two exits to the Loves. And as I was going up the ramp, I hear like this pop sound, and I hear a whistling really loud on the right side of my truck. I, I ignored it. I'm like, I got to get into the Loves. I don't want to get towed because that's a big expense, and I'm an owner operator and every expense is too much, you know what I mean? Um, so I finally get it into the truck stop and get it into a spot and I realized that I blew a seal on my DPF canister on the right side of my truck. So about a day goes by and I'm ordering parts and having them delivered to me and the whole chaos that you go through. Finally got that part on, which took about another day because I didn't have all the tools. And, um, instantly blew again. So I knew there was something else wrong. So after a little further investigation, I realized that my DPF filter was totally clogged from all the soot. Now, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have known that all that soot was caused by another issue, but I wasn't thinking about it. Just kind of, okay, I, I need to complete, need to replace my DPF filter. So I went online, I went home for Thanksgiving, and while I was at home, I went online and I found not just the DPF filter, but the whole unit. And I'm like, all right, it's the same price as what a brand new filter is, I'll buy that and put that on, and then I'll take my old one off, get it cleaned, and I'll have a clean filter. So I did that. I ordered it, it took about three weeks to come. It was almost Christmas time by the time it got there. So I stayed home for Christmas, um, so there's uh, like a month off right there. And so then just before New Year's, my wife, myself, and my son jumped in our car and we drove up there. So now we've been a month into this, one month. So we drove up there and it took us about five days. Um, I'm not a mechanic, I didn't know what I was doing. I was doing phone a friend like every five seconds, find out how to do stuff. Finally got the whole thing replaced. Um, started it up, I made a video about that. It ran really rough, really, really rough. Black soot just pouring out of that thing. I'm like, okay, there's something else wrong, obviously. So kind of was defeated and kind of went home and kind of regrouped a little bit, called a tow truck, got it towed to the dealership because it was the only place it could get me in right away. Um, took about, I don't know, three to five days to find out, you know, what was wrong with it. And come to find out it was a turbo and my um, injectors were bad. It's going to be about 15 grand, which I didn't have sitting around. So um, instead of at that point licking my wounds and you know, doing what I should be doing and, and going and find a company job to pay for this. I was trying to try every other way to pay for it. You know, I was trying to go through the people that I, that I brought money to get the truck from, see if they would help me out. I was trying to get a secondary loan, see if that would help. I tried everything I could. So I battled that for about another three weeks. So that was another month. So now we're, now we're looking at the end of January. Well, the end of January came and, you know, 
obviously financially I was in bad shape as it was after two months of not working and all these repairs and trips up there to get it fixed and all of that. So then I decided I was just going to go do a company thing. So I looked around and I found a company job. Started in about a week, week and a half. Um, so there's another half a month that's gone by and I finally start driving for them. Probably the worst company I've ever driven for. And I'm not, not trying to be mean, but they were not a good company. They never fixed their equipment. You could only put in like a certain amount of gas because they wanted you to fuel every single day rather than find a cheap place and fill up and then drive until you can get to another cheap place. That's the way I was used to as an owner operator. They didn't like that, so I had to fill up every day. So I did. Um, those are all just linguistics things that annoyed me. I mean, I could work there, it didn't bother me, but um, the thing that really bothered me about that company was the first time I was with them, um, that was this time that I'm talking about, um, they made me sit. Every time I delivered a load, I'd sit for a day, day and a half, two days. One time it was almost three and a half days before I got another load. And as a truck driver, that doesn't work for me. Yeah, I need to make money, and the way I make money, by moving. So. Um, eventually I split ways with that company and I realized that there was, you know, um, I, I had to do something different. And so I applied for another company um, and got approved. And then, you know, as I was saying, it's the worst six months of my life, so everything is gonna go bad. So I um, went to take my physical at a Cassentra and come to find out because I'm old, my neck is too big around, I guess, and I'm a guy, and I'm a little bit bigger of a guy, that they flagged me for a sleep apnea test. So there's another one about. So I couldn't get the job that I was going for, and so um, I licked my wounds and I went back to uh, the guy I was working for that honestly didn't run his company right. So I ran for him for about another month. So now we're talking like four and a half, five months into it, you know? Um, actually a little more than that, probably five and a half months into it. And I come home from running a, the second time back, he did a little bit better about lining up loads for me. I will say that, kept me moving pretty consistently. Um, but the last time back, I came back into town and he didn't have a load lined up for me. And he's like, just go home, enjoy the night. I'll text you in the morning, you know, let you know what load I have for you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I went home. Yeah, I got a text in the morning that he was closing his business. So yeah, so I was out of a job again. And I was in, because of all the financial straits and my landlord was selling his house, I had to move. So every bit of money I had just went into a move to move into the, what you're looking at now. And so that broke, no job. Had a job lined up with a, another um, friend of mine and that one's kind of on hold until the truck is, you know, whatever's going on with the truck gets fixed. So um, I'm just bouncing around. I'm looking for another job at this point. But it's been the worst six months, almost seven months, of my personal and professional life. I mean, I don't know how to put it. You know what, guys, if you stayed in until the end here, put in the comments. What are the worst things that's ever happened to you? In trucking, out of trucking, doesn't matter. This is kind of like a, you know, reflection video, just to let everybody know what's going on and where I've been, and, and it's just been crazy. So I appreciate everybody watching. All my uh, trucking buddies out there, keep the rubber on the road. Stay between the lines, stay right side up, and you'll be good. All my other friends that aren't truckers out there, hey, truckers are people too.